Too white for black people, yet too black for white people? A coconut's dilemma. Let's talk about it. Hello, Vendemis. Come on, welcome here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For this week's video, we are talking about the term coconut, everything surrounding it, my experience with the word, and why I simply, como se dice, hate it. <laughs> but anyway, I've been called this word so many times, so do forgive me if I tend to get personal. I'm already getting triggered just thinking about this entire video. Also, I do not have my glasses on today simply because it's so hot in here today. They are messing up so terribly. It can be very distracting. I do feel a bit insecure without them on, but we're trying to get this content out, baby. Also, I do want to say that I do realize that this conversation does apply to all people of color. My video, however, will be centered around my experience as a black person because that is what I know best and it's not necessarily my place to speak for other people of color and their experiences. So let's get right on to the video. Coconut as well as Oreo are terms used by people, mostly black people, to refer to other black people whom they feel don't present themselves black enough. It essentially implies that one may be black or brown on the outside, yet white on the inside. In all essence, these terms are just loose synonyms for being whitewashed aka people of color or in my case black individuals who engage in activities or live a lifestyle that is quote-unquote perceived to belong to the white race there are a number of things that one would have to do in order to be labeled whitewashed. Some of these things may include being articulate, being highly educated, being of high class, engaging in high class activities such as golf, polo, horse riding, you get the gist. Being in close proximity with white people, which also includes the willingness to date them, being in predominantly white friend groups or white spaces, listening to anything other than hip hop or R&B, which may include classical music, country music, electronic, punk, the list goes on. Already it sounds so ridiculous, but anyway. There are also a number of terms that are also used. The weirdest one that I have been called was the sellout or the less threatening slash palatable black person. What I have noticed is how loosely these terms are thrown around, especially within the black community, simply because we do not know how derogatory they are. It is actually sad because it highlights the struggles we have within our community when it comes to things such as classes, constructs, and social hierarchies. These terms are often leveled at people of color who do not act, speak, or dress in a way that is considered authentic to their race. These terms might seem harmless compared to words like the N-word and the P-word, which are already well-established slurs. However, they are quite reductive, demeaning, and propagate the idea that there's only one correct way to be a person of color, which is absolutely ridiculous. And most of the time, this behavior that is expected from people of color is rooted in stereotypes. Okay, so the glasses are back on. Hopefully, they do not steam up for this entire video. <sighs> Anyway, let's continue. This is quite an uncomfortable conversation for me to have today because based on my own personal experience, I've seen it come from a place where the assumption is made that simply because I have the privilege of having access to things such as education or higher learning experiences, I think of myself better than my own people. I look down on my own people as well as think of myself higher on the societal scale, which is honestly so dumb to me because no matter how successful, educated or polished one may be, their blackness is still very much present, which therefore subjects them to the daily discrimination and racism that black people face. However, I do realize that this type of thinking is embedded in a lot of my black folks. I too myself am still trying to unlearn the behaviors that are linked to this way of thinking. I remember I was once told by a friend that being a palatable black person is not necessarily a bad thing because white people quote unquote love me and are comfortable around me. And while I do acknowledge that my proximity to whiteness has benefited me to some extent in white spaces. I still find myself surrounded by conversations with racist undertones as well as watch my skin tone constantly being criminalized, marginalized, and politicized. Hi, editing Kuma here. I just wanted to speak on the statement that I just made about my proximity to whiteness. It is not essentially me referring to the white relatives that I do have. It is me simply talking about code switching. And if you do not know what code switching is, it is essentially the ability to kind of change your mannerisms and behaviors to suit the type of environment that you're in. A lot of black individuals do this. They act differently in white spaces than they do in black spaces simply because it helps us kind of fit in better. So the defense mechanism that we kind of use is also a thing that allows us to progress in spaces that are not necessarily made for us. Now, going back to stereotypes, I honestly blame the media for how they have portrayed people of color, especially black people throughout the years. Whenever you 
saw a black person come up on your screen, they were normally portrayed as being ghetto, loud, immature, on the lower side of the IQ scale, poor, dangerous, a gangster, illiterate, and so many other negative things. And oftentimes, the characters on these shows didn't have careers that necessarily required them to have some sort of formal or higher education. There were always minimum wage careers like a hairdresser, a mechanic, a nanny, a stripper, a drug dealer, you get my dress. Consumption of this type of media accompanied by Western ideologies conditioned us to fit ourselves in a mold of what exactly makes a person black. And oftentimes a person who finds themselves outside of that mold of stereotypes is criticized, ridiculed, and often told that they are quote unquote, trying to be something other than black, which often cases is white, or they are ashamed of their blackness. And while today the media has been doing somewhat of a good job of heading towards diverse and proper portrayal of black characters, we still see the effects of these earlier portrayals in various types of media today. A perfect example would be the comedy skits that we see on apps like TikTok and YouTube done by black creators. We also see the aftermath of these earlier portrayals in how people critique and invalidate people's blackness today. Content creators like Kelly Stamps, Quinn Blackwell, Markel Washington, and Larray, just to name a few, have all experienced some sort of backlash for not fitting into the stereotypical black person. Larray is such a good example of this because because mm, he was literally called a coon, bitch. A coon, the word that literally derived from the minstrel era, simply because he wasn't putting glocks on social media like you'll expect him to. There was literally petitions to get him to stop hanging around Caucasians because people thought that he was suddenly losing his blackness. Excuse me? Losing his blackness? called a sellout. Yes, he does hang around some questionable people, but that doesn't make him any less black simply because he isn't around other black individuals. I feel like I'm getting carried away with this whole Larray situation. We also tend to forget that we all come from different backgrounds, have different upbringings, and live in different environments. So obviously no two black people are the same. We also forget that black people exist in so many different religions and cultures. I can't really go out to England and expect black people in England to speak in AAVE. Yes, they may adopt some few terms because the online world allows easier access to such things. However, it is not what's usual in that type of environment. I really sometimes gag when I hear my suburban friends and cousins speak about pulling clocks, jumping on bitches outside, and busting a cap. Boy, you literally live in an estate and center. You all speak like that. It's terms like these that are thrown at us that make us feel like we have to play caricatures of what a black person should be simply because we want to prove our blackness or prove that we're not ashamed of our blackness. My intention for this video was not necessarily to come here and defend my blackness because with all the black creators that I've seen cover this topic, to some extent or another, they were kind of at some point justifying why they should still be considered black. I do not need to prove my blackness. I do not need to play a character to show that I'm black. I do not need to speak in a certain manner, dress in a certain manner, act in a certain manner, in order to prove that I am black, that is honestly so demeaning and very limiting for the versatility that comes with being black. There's so many shades of black people, there's so many types of black people, and you wanna come here and tell us that we should only act a certain way? A black man once said, being black is not what I'm trying to be, it is what I am. Hearing things like you're trying to be white literally hits so hard when it comes from your own people. Honestly, always being singled out as the non-black black person kind of alienates me because it's already so difficult for me to fit in with my own people due to my queerness. Now we gotta add not being black enough to that mix. I could never seem to win. It also makes me feel like I've betrayed my people in such a way, especially in South Africa where we're literally in the first years of a post-apartheid system. Ah, oh, man, being told that you're trying to be white is, it, it just rubs me the wrong way because it kind of makes me feel like my actions are adding on to white supremacy. And I do get that we do have a common goal as black people, and that is to oppose white supremacy, right? And there are certain whitewashed black individuals who do very questionable things, aka Christian Walker. It's the liberals pretending they're so offended by me saying the words ghetto and trashy, but being okay with killing babies in the womb for me. But also, most of us are not even trying to be white. It's just how we grew up. It also comes from the media that we consume. A question that honestly lingers in my mind is why are we so okay with attaching 
all the good traits about being a decent human being to white people why is being well mannered a white people thing why is being successful a white people thing why is being articulate a well educated a white people thing have you met white people maybe we should not be giving them that much praise and i get that this topic goes deep because there's so many things that have played a part in conditioning our people to think this way but with all the knowledge and education that we have at our fingertips today we really should not be continuing these ideologies at the end of the day we need to think about this in existential terms because reserving things like education a good standard of living as well as success just for white people is a harmful and degenerate ideology one of the things that i feel like we need to do as black people or people of color in general is to start to interrogate where these ideas ideologies come from, where this way of thinking comes from, and why we still continue to pass it on to the following generations. And honestly, this conversation is so complex and there's so many different perspectives from so many different people. So I also just want to say that I do not speak for all black people. I will leave a number of sources as well as articles that I found interesting when it comes to this topic down below in the description. There will also be videos by some creators that I felt talked about this topic pretty well also in the description yeah i'm gonna end the video here because i feel like if i continue going on i'm gonna continue going on you know what i'm saying that is it for this week's video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you learned something from it i hope you share it to your friends because we are trying to grow okay and that's it for me remember if you do not slay then you do not stay and that's on period bye